back home at the usual bench and what better way to start back than with another Death Trap Dalek and this is the incredibly fabulous disco version and uh, well let me demonstrate so I'll just uh, turn the light off here not touching the light while I'm turning the light off because there's a good chance that there's live metal work on this and it's got this sort of main set of light here and it's got a sort of light at the bottom. It's not very bright because of technical issues. And then you click it again and it's got the disco light at the top that is mainly red with a little hint of green but not much blue for other technical issue reasons. And then you turn it off and then you keep clicking and uh, the light in the middle doesn't go off. So you think, oh, oh right, okay, that's, that's because you have to fold it down. And when it's pushed in, it'll go off except it's actually still on in there. I haven't worked out how to put that light off yet, and it's just one of many significant technical problems. Not least the, the slight uh, main separation issue, so let's take a closer look at this right now. Ah, uh, yes. So this is another of these exciting camping lights which just carries so many dodgy surprises. It plugs into the mains to charge, and uh, when you plug it in, the little red indicator light lights up. And unfortunately, like the others, if I turn this over and I plug in this uh, USB light, which will light up, I've no, I've unplugged this for doing this. And then I sort of put that in halfway so I can get access to it with my tester. And by tester, I'm talking about a light bulb. And then I go between neutral here, which is the equivalent of Earth. And then I poke about on there, yeah, there's sparks and pops. That is uh, that is basically making the USB port live at mains voltage. And the reason for this is because it's using a capacitive dropper as the power supply. And uh, that means there's no mains isolation. So let's unplug it completely and explore this further. But it gets worse. It's got that problem that that light is still lit. It's not glowing very brightly because, well, because it just stays lit all the time even when it's trying to charge. And while the disco light kind of works, it rotates and it looks all disco complete with a CE label, which is just not relevant, that still manages to block several of the lenses, uh, reducing its disco ability. Uh, now, where was I with that? Let's just start opening it. That's the best bet. But uh, this thing has so many issues. One of the issues is that the circuit board on top has got three LEDs and they should all light and they should create that sort of red, green, blue effect. Hold on. But only the red and the green one are lighting. The blue one, I'm guessing, has the motor tapped across it. But because there's actually a common connection, then there's a resistor to each LED. Because they've put the motor across the blue one, and this is, um, this is just a guess, it's dragging the voltage down across that LED. Uh, what would happen if I just forced the motor round? Nah, nothing really major is happening. Okay, so uh, let's uh, see if we can get this open and see the capacitive dropper. Now, I was thinking initially that if I took the end off, as is the same system as one of the other ones, that there'd be a switch in here. Oh, there is a switch. There is a switch and it does turn that off. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on. It's just almost redeemed one factor. While we've got it open, let's uh, extend it up. I've solved one of the problems. Uh, extend it up to see the switch. The switch has mains connections, but they're not touching. Oh, I don't... Ooh, they're very close to, but they're not quite touching the chrome trim. One of the last lights, they touched the chrome trim, and when I put the probe onto the chrome trim, uh, it actually, when it was powered up, there was a loud pop and a shower of sparks around it and it blew a lot of the chrome off because the actual button was live while it was charging. So this is interesting. It looks like I can fix this. So if you get one of these, not that I'd recommend it, then this switch is supposed to be hit by that spring there, which means that this should be round about. It doesn't really lock into place. This is why it doesn't work. But now when you put this down, Yep, yeah, see, it is clicking on and off now. But there's nothing to actually hold that in position, which is why it wasn't working. Because uh, obviously when you screw it up, it may just nudge that round. It depends on where they put that lens, that reflector, should I say, in the factory, where that's going to work. Well, that's a huge improvement for a start.
Okay. Now let's see if we can fix the other problems. Well, we can't really fix the, the main problem, which is the fact that it's uh, just sticking mains voltage out in the USB port. This is where I always, when I've got a phone, get a plastic sleeve cover. You know these little sleeves that just go on? They're, they're a huge help in that because not only are they going to protect you from getting an electric shock if you plug it, your phone to charge into a faulty USB device or one of these not faulty but just completely fatal USB devices, but uh, they also, if you drop your phone, it's going to really have a major influence on saving it from being broken. Now I'm looking for my smaller, smaller screwdriver bits. I may have to rake into the toolbox here for other other screwdrivers. Let's uh, see if I can get a smaller screwdriver bit here. I should have a complete set of the screwdriver bits. Oh, there's was that going to fit? Yes, it is. Poundman screwdriver saves the day. So let's uh, get this open. And take a look at the circuitry. I kind of know what the circuitry is already because it's going to be very similar to others because they all copy each other. Uh, so we've got a pack of three nickel metal hydride cells, probably. We've got the USB connector which come off. The mains is coming onto this. It's got a bridge rack far. Uh, the other ones tend to be discrete diodes. It's got LED and resistor, right, okay, I'm going to reverse engineer this. It's got that capacitor, which does look as though, it, I think it's got a discharge resistor across it there, which is good. I'll just check that by putting my fingers across it. Yeah, it's got a discharge resistor. And we've got the two connections coming up here that should power this up, and the one of them should go to the outer connection. The other should actually go to a common connection to all these resistors, but it's not. It's going instead directly to the, that LED there, which means that LED may actually have been nuked. That's odd. How strange. Okay, so I'm going to pause. I'm going to reverse engineer this uh, circuitry here, and then we'll take a look at it. And here's the result. The circuit board is based on one of the standard units that doesn't have the sort of disco light section. And it's got the facility for a solar panel. It's got the diode in the circuit board, but it's not used. But everything else is pretty much the same. The capacitive dropper uses a really odd value capacitor, 750 nanofarad. Quite an odd value, with an 820k discharge resistor across it. That then uh, goes via this full bridge rectifier. Charges this while well, capacitor is just really used for smoothing. 220 mg fired, 16 volt, and then charges the nickel metal hydride cells. The USB port is just to directly connected across them. I put a, a, well, you know, the voltage there is going to be somewhere between about 3.6 to 4.5 volts, depending on the state of charge of the nickel metal hydride cells. There's a little LED up here, which is the red LED, that indicates when it's charging, and that is powered from either when the it's charging via the mains, it'll make that red LED light, as, as well as the current flowing through there. But also, the uh, solar panel, it's a bit wasteful. It's got a diode there, but it's also kind of got a blocking diode in the rectifier. But um, it's got the uh, facility to charge via the rectifier, and it'll also make that LED light. So any charging system will make the LED light up. The output has uh, the multi-position switch. One switch uh, does the LED in the end here, which is a standard sort of star LED, and it just, there's no resistor or anything, it just switches straight to it. And the other position of the switch, um, oh, you know what, I've not drawn in here. I have not drawn one other item. Hold on, I'll just draw it in right now. It's the, uh, well, let's draw it up here then. So that's the mystery voltage and the zero volts. And it's the switch to the other LEDs, which are just a cluster of LEDs, again in parallel, with a no net necessary resistor, probably in this situation, because they're relying on just pushing the LEDs too hard, and the resistance, the wiring and the circuitry, it's just not a very nice thing, but it's just what these, these things do. And that's the, the one where you pull the camera light open. The disco section was really odd. It's basically got a bus 
The switch switches to that, and uh, that will then power the motor, and then it will drive the LEDs, red, green, and blue, uh, via three resistors. And the resistors are quite odd values. I would have thought the red LED would have had the highest value of resistor because the highest voltage has to be dropped. But the highest value of resistor 50 ohm is with the green LED, just presumably because it's the brightest colour. 7.5 ohm for the red and a rather odd 1 ohm for the blue, but that didn't matter because instead of connecting the positive from here to the bus, they'd actually connected it to here. So it was directly across the blue LED and everything else was powered via that 1 ohm resistor going back feeding to the bus. Now, I thought the blue LED had been destroyed, but it hadn't. It's, the voltage has never been able to get high enough to even make that light properly. So uh, once I swapped the connection over, uh, the disco section does work. I mean, the blue LED is not very bright because ultimately... Um, it's well, it, it may actually not be too happy because of the uh, grilling it received by having that supply across it. Sometimes it lights bright and sometimes it doesn't. It's a bit random and flickery, but the motor is running consistently. And beforehand, because it was through a resistor, when the motor met any resistance, the LEDs would flicker up and down too. So that's it. It's fixed. Not that I'd actually recommend buying one of these because it does have that slight mains output issue. I did discover one thing. There's a little fin here that does tally up with a slot on the casing, but if, when it's being assembled, they aim for that, but it misses it in any way, it rotates and that stops the switch working. So if you have one of these and that switch isn't working, then uh, that's how you can fix it by lining that slot up more accurately. Not that I would recommend this at all, as I say, because the circuitry is directly referenced to the mains via this capacitive dropper. And uh, that means that the USB port is live at mains voltage when it's charging and could deliver, well, the, the only thing between you and a fatal electrocution, depending on the way this is plugged in, if it's this one's plugged in, the only thing between you and a significant shock is uh, the diode in here going to the USB connector. Uh, the If it's connected the other way around, you'll still get a shock, but it will be limited to a degree by the capacitor to a absolutely horrendous level that would still make you scream hysterically and could have adverse health effects. So, yeah, it's a more glamorous version of the Death Dalek type camping light, but uh, it has some really major safety flaws. And just to show you what the disco effect looks like, though I do notice that if you unplug it from the power of the mains, the blue LED goes really dim. It really is just in the borderline of operation. It needs to be plugged in for maximum intensity with all the problems associated with it being plugged in. But yeah, I suppose ultimately it does work, although it is a bit of a death disco.